Hey everybody, let's talk about my workflow for updating posts right now. Now I have a ton of different workflows for this. You really can do it in a ton of different ways, but my current one is what I'm loving right now. So I wanna share it with you guys, including three plugins that I am obsessed with, like genuinely problematically obsessed with. <laughs> So this is one of my niche sites that needs some updating. I mean, you really should be updating content super, super regularly. My dad was such a clean freak that we had to like vacuum the doors, not the frames, the physical doors before people came over to our house. Like that man has problems. <laughs> but because of that, I do know that you're supposed to clean up before you have a bunch of people over for a party. And the same thing happens for your website. You want to update content because you can get easy traffic wins and you wanna have good content to show them when they get there. You don't wanna have one amazing post and then a hundred terrible posts, or even just like kinda of dusty, I don't know, old shirt on the bed, kind of like not the greatest scenario sort of thing. So that's why we clean things up. Now we're gonna go through my exact workflow, but first I just wanna show you the plugins that we're gonna use. The very first one is Niche Campus. It is a 100% free plugin that I think is so amazing it should not be free. So I have even told the guy that made it, please don't make this free. You should be, like make people pay for this. It is so helpful. Um, yeah, I'm not helping us guys. So get this immediately before he comes to his senses and Joe makes this a paid tool. <laughs> This one you can download and then put on all your sites. It is super easy. And what it does is it shows you any posts on your site that need updates. So if you have different types of stuff too, if you have like, um, I don't know, different like categories or projects or something for whatever you have posts categorized as, it'll work for those too. But for me, for this site, I just have posts. And it can tell me any post that I have not updated in the last three months. It'll tell you exactly when you last modified it. If I hit edit, I can also adjust this. So naturally it doesn't do three months, but I've been kind of in this site updating random things. Um, and I didn't realize I had my link whisper set to change the modify date. So that caused some like discrepancies here. Um, but it naturally does more like six months or a year. I recommend doing a content audit at least every six months, minimum, like the bare minimum once a year, super, super important. Now this is the first iteration of the plugin. I got to beta test it, which is super cool. I love beta testing things. Send me stuff to beta test, please. Anyone who's a developer, I like beta testing stuff. Um, and one of the things that is being worked on is update sensitivity. So basically it'll be able to sense how significant the changes you made were. So if you just change 2023 to 2022 in a title, it'll be like, okay, that's not su a, like a super intense change. But if you rewrote the whole thing, that's gonna obviously have a bigger input or impact. So that's something that's coming, but right now it just tells you what you haven't updated. So I can see things that need work. I can be like, okay, I have five posts that really need me to do something. I've also turned off that link whisper setting that way it doesn't currently cause that issue. So I can kind of see some older ones as well. Cause just looking at the publish date, you don't necessarily know if you change stuff, like you genuinely don't, unless you're constantly changing that publish date. And many of us just aren't doing it that often. So this is a great way to find the things that we're gonna update. Next, we're gonna use Query Hunter. Now I have another video on Query Hunter. It's one of like my most popular ones on this site um, or on my YouTube, but the problem is the free version doesn't have all of the capabilities that now the new pro version does. 39 pounds for a lifetime deal for unlimited sites. Very, very, very worth it. I jumped on this so fast, like a puma. I was like, I need this today. So I got it and I was immediately playing around with it. Now I have opened up a post over here that we can work on. So you can see the differences. So the standard version of Query Hunter, I always wanna call it the old version, but I think standard probably makes more sense because it's still available. Like you can still get the free version if you've never had it before. The updates to this one, the main difference is the Content Genie. The Content Genie connects to a ChatGPT API and will auto-create sentences, paragraphs, or snippets of the, like, the queries, AKA the keywords, that you need to add to this post. So sometimes there are things that we rank for that we didn't mention in the content, so we need to include it. 
Sometimes there are things that we like didn't mention, but we rank for. And if we mentioned it, we'd probably do better. Sometimes there are things that we just didn't go into enough, enough depth for. Other times there are things we just didn't think of to include. Or maybe we just like didn't do the best job the first time. I've definitely been there. I mean, we all have. We cannot give 110% to every single article. Things get messed up. So this is a really easy way to be able to add these terms in immediately with sentences, paragraphs, or snippets. The snippets are made for the featured snippet kind of area, which is something that Google is like reducing a little bit. So definitely it's not my priority to use the snippet, but I find it works really, really well for people also ask. So if you go to questions, it's going to pull any keyword that vaguely looks like a question. They're not all perfect questions like must see Ottawa, Canada, but you're going to kind of put that into a question of like, what are the must see things in Ottawa, Canada? That's kind of the way it works. A more like traditional question I would say is this one, what to do in Ottawa this weekend? I could generate a snippet for that that then can go in my FAQ section. Super easy, very like not a problem to add that in, very much something that will be beneficial to my site to rank for those. Even though, yes, at time of recording, Google is like diminishing the amount of PAA it's showing for people and it's trying to like reduce who gets those. To, they keep saying it's like medical or high authority things, which is super vague. Well, not medical, but the high authority. I still rank for a bunch, so I'm going to keep doing it. But also it's really beneficial to my user and it lets me use that keyword and fully answer that keyword. So what I've been doing is looking for anything where I'm on page one, but I'm not in the number one spot. And I look, okay, why? This article, genuinely gonna be honest with y'all, bad article, not a good article. <laughs> one of the very first ones I generated for this site that I actually did for a demo somewhere about like why you shouldn't use AI with no editing. And then I published it with no editing. So it's grown a lot over the year thanks to topical authority, but it's not a good piece of content. I can fully admit that it's not great for its main keyword. It's ranking position 26. So like it needs some work, especially for a year old post. It doesn't have backlinks. It doesn't have any of the things it should have. Like I messed up here, guys, I can fully admit that. So for that one, I would need to do more of like an in-depth analysis, but for secondary keywords, like places to visit in Ottawa, maybe I didn't include that. I did, but if I didn't, I would go generate it, which is actually what I did. So I created the places to visit in Ottawa with Query Hunter Pro. I have not edited this. I've done nothing to it yet. I just hit paragraph, got this, copy and pasted it. But we're going to find another one now. So the sentence and paragraph, I do want you guys to know, it's not going to read the rest of the content here. It's basically just prompting the API of ChatGPT write a sentence including this keyword, write a paragraph including this keyword. It's not pulling on your EEAT, it's not pulling your style, it's not pulling all of the specifications of your site and like who you are and your style and everything or any other content you already have. So it doesn't like add more in that sense. Um, so you're probably gonna need to edit it. So for the paragraph sections, an easy way to edit this would be to copy that section, put it into ChatGPT. Well, for, before you put it in, you're going to say, okay, hey, ChatGPT, define this as Nina's style. And I'll take another section that I did actually write and have it define that as Nina's style. Then I'll feed it this and say, rewrite this in Nina's style. And it's just going to change that tone a little bit to make it more me. So it fits my style. I can also say include, I don't know, um, trying to think of somewhere in Ottawa that I would include for places to visit that it didn't. Uh, include the Gatineau Parks Pink Lake or something. If you want to add more details that are here. This is a starting point. I would not put this in, leave it be done, it's perfect. Because it's just not really going to be. I think for the FAQs you can do that a little bit more. But for the other sections it's a bit harder. For a single sentence you can get away with it. So let's find some that we can add to this post. So we have things to do in Byword Market. I think that's a pretty good one to add in. I'm going to do that as a paragraph. Let's try it. So you click it, it generates, and you can see I don't input anything. And that's kind of the beauty of it is that you don't have to. Now, definitely you may want to edit this. So then you would copy this and take it to ChatGPT. I have the Jasper Chrome extension, so I can edit things and rewrite things 
inside of the document, which is something I really love doing. There are um, ChatGPT Chrome extensions that you can do this with as well, very much up to you. So you can copy text over here. I will be honest, I am such a control freak that I always just copy it this way. <laughs> it's just my issues. I've got problems, guys, and I know it. So then we'll come up here and paste it. And we can see things to do in Byward Market. Byward Market, located in Ottawa, Canada, is a vibrant and historic district that offers a plethora of activities, blah, 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 blah. One of the top things to do in Byward Market, so there it's actually giving you the keyword, and then it's going to give you some information. And this is factually correct. I just don't think it's the most, I don't know, interesting, and it's not very specific. It has two specifics, the Notre Dame Cathedral Basilica and the Bytown Museum, which like no one goes to. It's like not really a thing people care about. But all of the like unique souvenirs, fresh produce stuff, it's pretty general about like what gourmet cuisine and street food is. Never mentions poutine or, boover, or beaver tails, which are like two big things there. So I would want to add those in. So I would make that edit. But it's a lot easier to work not off a blank page. So definitely helpful. Now let's find another one. And definitely, um, I keep saying definitely today, but do like use your own logic. So this like the guide to bars and nightclub insurance in Ontario, I'm not going to include that because that sounds nonsensical to me. It has nothing to do with my content for what I'm looking for. So I'm going to skip it. You can make that judgment call. This is your analysis of what's happening here. Um, you do not need to, and I definitely don't recommend including 27 pages of these. <laughs> don't do that. You will just be keyword stuffing and that's not good. But maybe this unique things to do in Ottawa. I mean, that is like a keyword I'm on page two for. I'm pretty close. I've never mentioned it. Let's try just adding a sentence of it somewhere. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this randomly and I'm not gonna put it in like a proper spot right now. But here I can say there are numerous unique things to do in Ottawa, including visiting the stunning Parliament Hill, exploring the historic Byward Market, and enjoying a leisurely boat ride along the Rideau Canal. That's fine. Let's just put it somewhere in there, in the conclusion. I don't know. I'm going to have to go through this before I hit update because I'm notorious for doing that when something's half finished. And then we can just keep going and finding things. Now, like I said in the question, that's probably where I would pull um, a snippet mostly from. So I'm trying to find one that's a little bit different. Let's do what is there to see in Ottawa and let's make a snippet. I just want you guys to see the like the different output it gives because this one is a lot shorter. Paragraph is meant to be like a full header section. This one is meant to be a snippet. It's trained. Um, basically, they trained it on a style guide for a snippet for how long it should be. This one might be a tiny bit long, probably not by much but maybe by a bit. No, 56 words, that's pretty good. So that one could be an FAQ. It could also be a featured snippet at the top. I'm actually gonna take this whole thing and just paste it in as an FAQ. And then as you can see, I haven't formatted anything. I have not fixed things up. I would definitely want to do that. But minimally, it's kind of done. <laughs> I just need to edit it a bit more. Now, if you're truly lazy, and I do not recommend this to be honest, and neither do the developers, you can come to Lazy Genie and it will auto add as many of the unused ones here as possible in one paragraph. It's kind of a black hat thing. And like that's even said, like there's a demo video here where like literally Joe is like, careful, maybe don't do this. <laughs> Probably don't do this. So I would not recommend it. We're not going to do it because I do think it's important to not just shove keywords in for the sake of keywords. We want to create that content that's relevant to it. And remember that like this is pulling from Google Search Console, but even like the mention in content, it's looking for exact matches. So things to do downtown Ottawa or things to do in downtown Ottawa, it's only going to recognize one of those, even though Google can recognize that it's basically the same thing and Google's smart enough to do that. So don't over optimize here. Don't do every single word. I've seen people do that and it just comes across kind of spammy to your users. If you have like 10 header sections that are all just variations of the same word or same terms, yeah, it gets to be too much. Now to actually see the payoff of this, we're going to use rank logic. Rank logic is a plugin developed by Spencer who also developed Link Whisper. He's best known for niche pursuits. Um, I got to also beta test this, which is really fun, but rank logic essentially is the tracking element of your updates. So here we have camp out is like 
what to start with. Query Hunter is actually fixing it. And then Rank Logic is tracking the changes. So I love this trio because it means I don't need to export all of my posts. I don't need to like have 20 million spreadsheets. I have so many spreadsheets, guys. I love a spreadsheet, but I have too many. So I lose track of things. And even like on um, one of these videos, there's a couple videos on the page. I don't remember which one. Somewhere in this, Joe says, keep track of the changes you made. Maybe even export all of like what you currently rank for on Google Search Console so you can compare it later. Now you don't have to do that. Rank Logic will do it all for you, which is amazing. Now, I haven't actually updated anything on the Ottawa site, so I'm going to take you over to my main site where we're going to see some updates that did actually happen. So over here, this is Rank Logic. Rank Logic, I think it's really cool. I don't know, I think it looks really epic. It is basically pulling from your Google Search Console. Now I filtered it so we're only going to see a few of my posts that are about solo travel, which is an old pillar that isn't really a thing anymore on this site. A girl's got to have some secrets, guys. Um, but this is going to give you an idea of what, um, like how we can track this. So the first four here, total clicks, impressions, click through rate, and position are going to show us the basic things that we also see on um, Google Search Console. So right now I have it set to show us the last kind of 30 days so far. Then you can see post titles, when it was published, the top keyword, if you click the arrow, it'll show you all the keywords. There you go. So now you can see every variation of a keyword it ranks for. You can see the position and the change. So it's going to automatically compare this 30 days to the last 30 days. Same for clicks. Impressions, it doesn't necessarily show you a change in them. I don't think they usually change a ton for some of these, but for seasonal one, I've, it, yeah, maybe. I don't really pay attention to impressions. I don't really care about them. I care about position and click. And then click through rate to some extent, but I mean, that's going to be dictated largely by clicks over here. So what are events? Events are anything you changed, essentially. It's going to be able to track that and then tell you if that change was positive or negative. So I think it's so cool because I can come here. I know a lot of people want to track their keywords. I'm not that person. I don't care about checking my ranking for a keyword every single day. I think that's kind of a waste of time. But I know early on when you're getting into SEO, you want to see that like you want that dopamine rush of seeing results. So I do get that. And here you can see it. So you're going to be able to track your position and see how it's changed. Now, this is like not something I've really focused on this pillar. So like they're not the best, to be honest. And a few of them down here you can see are no indexed. So they don't have positions <laughs> like they just don't exist. The other ones, I, th I actually thought some of these were no index. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to have to double check some stuff. But this is a great way to check what's ranking, how it's ranking, what changed since you didn't update. So I don't have any events for us to look at because I haven't made any updates to these things. But when you have events where you have changes, you can actually click in and it will compare the old version of the document with the new one. So you'll be able to see exactly what you changed. And that's so beneficial because then you can be like, okay, this one lost rankings. It's been three months. Like if you update things, expect that rankings will drop. That is pretty normal if you do like a massive update or overhaul to a post. If you just do some formatting or add an image or something, you likely won't really see any movement. But if you're like, okay, I'm going to rip this thing down to the studs and start again, things are going to move a bit. So you can then see, okay, if I did that and it's been three months, six months, and the rankings are still lower, you can revert the changes back. So this way you're able to track what did I change and is it a positive change? So I've done a few posts on this site, again, not really in this pillar. This isn't a pillar I care that much about, um, but I went through and I changed all the titles basically on my site as much as I could. Now I was able to then track which ones that title change has already had an impact on. And I only changed those a couple weeks ago. So like it's not, I don't know, it didn't take a long time to see results. But for some of them, the CTR improved by like over a percent, which is amazing, like so helpful. You get a whole percent more clicks like that is really, really good. And that's without updating any of the actual content in the posts. Now, because this site has a ton of content for me to go through, um, I don't have time to yes, yeah, sit there and analyze every single secondary keyword and all those different things. So that's where this trio comes in that I love so much. 
I don't need to keep a list anymore of the last time I updated the post. I can quickly add things in. We're like, yeah, I probably could write a sentence pretty easily. But if you're just exhausted after a long day, if you're mentally checked out because you just need to like take a break after working a full day, or your kids are screaming, or your dog is barking at the French Bulldogs next door because they have some sort of like weird feud going on, which is driving me nuts, Theo, <laughs> then this can help. And it's a great starting point to adjust this content and to edit it. Even if you need to overhaul the whole piece, I've done some where I've had Query Hunter add in a paragraph, a snippet, a sentence, whatever, throughout the post, and then I'm still gonna overhaul the whole thing, but I'm gonna tell it to maintain the content and the keywords. And then ChatGPT and Jasper, whichever one you prefer, it's actually able to hold on to that list of keywords you used, and it's able to adjust your content while keeping them. So I get to have a redone post really quickly, which saves me so much time. <laughs> And then rank logic, I can actually see what's working and what's not. I can track things across my site to see what are the changes I made, are they beneficial, and I'm able to like have more power over my analytics, which I think is so important. So many of us, like we look at Google Search Console, but then we, we yeah, we have to have a ton of different spreadsheets to keep track of whatever the heck is going on. And I lose track of those things, especially amongst different sites, especially if you have your editor or a VA or even writers looking at the content across different things, then you have to give them all access to all sorts of stuff. Or they can just come onto Rank Logic and just see it here. You can also filter um, by the writer. So for my site, I just have myself as an author because I have ghost writers. But if you have other authors, you can actually see whose content is performing a certain way. Maybe a certain person just like didn't really have good traffic. Maybe that means you let them go or you train them better. Maybe um, someone else is like doing amazing. So maybe that's a sign to give them a raise. All sorts of things that you can do here. Now, I've also started creating projects. Um, well, I'm going to start creating projects. I decided I would start. And with my ADHD, to me, that means I've started. <laughs> but you can create projects to group things, whether that's a certain like kind of pillar of keywords, if it's um, certain posts that are all connected to each other. What I'm doing with it is I'm actually creating projects for my ghostwriters. So for every writer, they're getting a project of what they wrote so I can track it this way. So that then I can see the return on my investment in terms of rankings. Beyond that, I do also track like the RPMs and the affiliate income I make per post to see if that person is like, if it's profitable to have them write for me sort of a thing. The better the posts do, the more I'm gonna pay that person, simple kind of the best way for it to work. <laughs> so yeah, this is my workflow with these three plugins. I'm gonna include my affiliate links below um, and just like, so you can grab them. Again, Campout is free, so it's not an affiliate link, but it's there. Query Hunter, 39 pounds, lifetime. You never have to pay that again. I don't know the conversion rates though. Um, typically like pre-pandemic, it was like a pound is like double the Canadian dollar. So 80 bucks kind of worst case sort of thing. And then Rank Logic. Um, Rank Logic's pricing depends on your sites. I don't think I said that. So you can get one site for $67 a year, three sites for 107, 10 sites for 157. Now, if you have a few friends, maybe you split a license. I know that's not like the best thing and Spencer's probably gonna get mad at me for saying that. I'm sorry, Spencer. But if you have some really, really close friends and you guys do work together, this can be a, a beneficial thing. But you gotta really trust each other. Personally, I got trust issues. I just buy things myself. <laughs> But I think this is such a great tool and yeah, I think all three of them work so well together. Could you update posts without any of them? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you could definitely do this like kind of the old school way of just a bunch of spreadsheets, you going through stuff, you tracking everything manually. I'm exhausted just thinking about it and like already getting kind of heart palpitations over the amount of spreadsheets I have that literally look like that. I don't want to have spreadsheets like that anymore. <laughs> so that's why I'm loving this and I do really recommend it. So I hope you enjoyed this video on how I'm doing my content audits now. Um, and I hope you guys can put this into action and save you so much time. Cause like, this is the thing, content audits and like updating content, it's an easy win. Google already trusts that content. So we don't need to convince it again that we are worth its time. 
it already recognizes that piece. So we are able to just put some makeup on it. I don't know, do like the 90s movie thing of like, take the glasses off, pull the hair down. And it's like, oh my God, she's beautiful. That's basically what we're doing. <laughs> so we're just giving it a little bit of a makeover so Google appreciates it a bit more. And that means it can gain rankings a lot faster. I do want to end on just a warning for anybody who is really close to Mediavine or Raptive or whatever their traffic level goal is to get into an ad network. Do not update content a month before you're going to get in. Updating content typically results in losses before it results in gains. The more you overhaul it, the more people are confused, like who is that, what is that? Same kind of idea here. So it takes Google a second to understand it's the same person and this beautiful, like amazing version of it. And now it's the jock that wants to date this beautiful mousy girl that used to be, I don't know, the like nerd. I don't know. I didn't watch 90s movies. I was born in the 90s. So I didn't, didn't have the memory. I've repressed my whole childhood. <laughs> but um, yeah, so don't like make those changes right then because you will likely drop that traffic off. Do it just like backlinks front load backlinks, front load a content audit for any of those big pushes because it takes a minute for them to take effect. Backlinks take like 30 to 90 days, pretty much 90 days on average though. Um, but updating content can give you wins earlier, but you will see a slight dip for some things. And we just don't want you to be like a thousand page views from Mediavine and then you yell at me and go, Nina, you ruined it. I didn't, I told you. So now you know, you've been warned. Um, so do go forth though and do content audits. I really, really recommend them. And I have seen so many amazing traffic wins from them. It's the first thing I did on my six months to 50K journey for Mediavine. And yeah, the first month it was panic. The second month it was like, holy crap, this is amazing. So I hope you have similar success and I cannot wait to hear how it works out for you. Okay, see you soon.